Oh no. Oh no, I think I did my top movies of 2018 list a little bit too early because I think I might have a new number one. God, does this make me a Natalie Portman stand now? Jesus Christ. Vox Lux is the second film from actor turned writer director Brady Corbett, centering on the rise of young pop star Celeste following a terrible tragedy and later exploring her life in the spotlight as an adult. Now, I wanna get this out of the way first because I didn't actually realize this movie was anywhere near as polarizing as it is. I tracked it through the festival circuit while it was still a highly acclaimed movie. And at some point between now and then, things have become much more divisive. And so what I wanna say is that while I love this movie just, just insanely and it's, one of my favorites of last year, if not my new favorite movie of 2018. It is not an easy movie for me to recommend to you guys. I think there's been a very, very mixed response to it. A lot of people are not getting anything from it. They're not enjoying it. I did. So I can't necessarily say that just because I'm enjoying it that everyone else out there will. I don't think we should ever take reviews in that way anyway. Just because someone liked it doesn't mean that I think you guys are gonna like it. And I totally understand if you've seen the movie already and you don't get anything out of it and you think that I am fucking crazy for loving it. Because this is a crazy movie. I saw it over a week ago now, it's been nearly two weeks and I still don't think that I've fully wrapped my head around it. I don't think that that's even possible to do on one viewing. Uh, so I'm just gonna be trying to get through this review and trying to translate whatever feeling it is in me that's made me so attached to this movie. I'm just gonna do my best and I'm gonna do it in the most spoiler free way I can. I will use a bit of trailer footage so you guys can get an idea of what the movie uh, looks and moves like, but I'm gonna edit out everything you don't need to see. So avoid watching the trailer aside from the footage that I show because the less you know about this going into it, the more of a surprising and provocative experience you're gonna have. The first thing that I wanna lose my mind over is how this story is structured. It's basically like a Moonlight or Steve Jobs type deal where it's segmenting the life of a person. So you get a flow on effect from uh, seeing how they progress through stages of their life. In this film, it's split into two halves. We have teenage Celeste and adult Celeste, and it's all about setting up everything in the teenage Celeste phase. So we get to see how, you know, with a gap of uh, 15 years or whatever, we get to see how that person got to this stage. And then we get to really examine what makes that person tick. And it's all about kind of planting seeds and then letting them glow and uh, grow and, and flourish. And it's just incredible. Wow, you can really tell I'm back into improvising reviews because this is wild so far. The performances from Killing of a Sacred Deer's Rafi Cassidy and Natalie Portman are so unbelievably good that it just, it melts my brain. Cassidy plays this far more innocent teen thrust into a very different and very brutal world who's forced to adapt in order to thrive, while Portman gives one of my favorite performances ever as a seasoned pop star with just a crippling ego and narcissism that is starting to make her implode. Portman in particular is playing in a realm of nastiness that I just don't think I've ever really seen her go into and she's utterly convincing. It's kind of a testament to just how good the interplay is here between actor and director that they're still able to mine so much empathy from such a walking train wreck. And I think so much of that comes down to how the movie sets up who she is so that we kind of understand why she is this way. Even if we're like, damn, you are out of control. To me, Vox Lux is a really fascinating exploration of that kind of character, that kind of pop diva personality, someone who's kind of in the vein of say like Kanye West and how self-destructive that kind of personality is and how difficult it is to not be an extreme person when your circumstances are so extreme. And so for me, that's why I feel like some of this movie's kind of messiness and contradiction just seems to actually elevate the experience as a whole. I feel like if this was a totally clean, down the line and focused movie, 
it would have lost a lot of that kind of frenetic energy that I think you need to have in order to support the kind of character that you're exploring. The opening scene of this movie is immediately one of my all time favorites. I was just blown away by it. I was stunned by it. It floored me and the power of that scene alone held me to the floor for the entire duration of the movie. It's just this tsunami of craziness uh, that follows just washed over me and just held me down. And this is not an easy movie to digest at all. And that goes all the way through to its ending, which is simultaneously long-winded and probably too abrupt. So they're two things that don't really work together, but you'll get what I'm saying uh, if you see it. And it also just leaves you with more questions than answers. But I feel like in a movie like this, that's what you need. I feel like if a movie like this was wrapped up in a neat and tidy uh, package that was easy to grasp, it probably would have failed. So the fact that I, I'm still, you know, exploring it and, and kind of digging through it all this time later, it's just, that's exactly where it needs to be. The songs which are written by Sia and the musical score which is composed by Scott Walker helps to create this bizarre, unsettling atmosphere that's simultaneously sincere and just incredibly vapid. The music from the opening credits is gonna stay seared in my brain, which probably is more to do with the events that preceded it, but still that entire sequence just, I'm gonna, wow, wow. And of course, uh, Natalie Portman sings all of the songs in this movie, as well as Raffi Cassidy. Uh, Natalie Portman's voice is buried under a fair bit of auto-tune, but she really sells the pop star thing, particularly when you see her dancing and performing on stage and obviously Raffi Cassidy has just an outstanding voice and her version of Wrapped Up in this movie which kind of acts as an anthem for the nation to kind of cope with uh, tragedy is just this incredibly compelling springboard for her character to launch off. I mean, what? I think that there's a lot to be said about how this movie frames fame and how that fame affects the people around that superstar, that person whose life is just so extreme, who has the same ups and downs, I guess, as everyone else, but they're just so much more exaggerated because they're living in the public spotlight with all these people that have such intense opinions about them and how hard that makes for that person to be able to grab onto anything real and solid and, and unmoving uh, to stop them from spiraling out of control. There's a lot to be said about how the world responds to tragedy and how we collectively try to cope with that by looking for figureheads that we can kind of rally around in order to make sense of it. There's a lot to be said about how everyone on earth at the end of the day is just trying to feel good and just wants to smile no matter how much bullshit they're going through. As I've said, Vox Lux is a wild and messy movie at times, but these are just the things that I took away from it. And truth be told, any movie that is as unique as this, as fierce as this, it's gonna be a movie that's just totally irresistible to me. And I think that's why I'm so wrapped up by Vox Lux. So those are my really wild thoughts on Vox Lux. Have you seen it yet? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you like this video? Well, of course you did. You can subscribe to Breaking Banter down there somewhere, as well as my other channel, Loverboy Media. Over there somewhere, you can follow me on Twitter at Loverboy Media and on Instagram at Breaking Banter. And of course, if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to do so. Thank you so much to everyone who is doing that already. Mwah. You guys are amazing. You're all amazing. And I will see every one of you in the next next video.